and I'll introduce each of them before they read in the order John Matthias, followed by Joel and Sweden. But before I do so, I'd like to record my deep appreciation for the sponsors of this event and of this evening's presentation of Ballet Mechanique, for which I hope you all remain, not least to get some of the food and wine beforehand. Um, so I'd like to thank the Committee on Creative Writing, the Poet Present Reading and Lecture Series, the Arts Council, and our hosts here this afternoon, the International House Global Voices Series. Uh, this event has been quite complex to organize, and I'd like to thank Kate Soto, Candice Brown, Jen Nassiger, and Mary Beth de Stefanak for their help. John Mathias was born in Columbus, Ohio in 1941, and attended Ohio State University and Stanford University. At Stanford, he studied under the poet and critic Ida Winters, but did not conform to Winters' stringent anti-modernist position. <laughs> in fact, John became deeply interested in modernism, especially English modernism. I wouldn't be surprised to know that such a thing exists, actually. Uh, which he came to know well during many years of residence in England. His peers at Stanford included two future poets laureate of the United States, Robert Hans and Robert Pinsky, as well as the poets James McMichael and John Peck. These poets are the subject of Robert Arkenbo's recent book, Laureates and Heretics, Six Careers in American Poetry, the sixth being Ivor Winters himself, for those who are counting. This account of literary reputation making within one generation of important American poets scarcely disguises its assessment that the heretic, John Matthias, is the most remarkable poet in the bunch. As influences, John cites John Berryman, Ezra Pound, and perhaps more importantly, the Anglo-Welsh poet David Jones, on whose work he has edited two books. His own books include Eusiris, 1970, Turns, 1975, Crossing, 1979, Northern Summer, 1984, A Gathering of Ways, 1991, Beltane at Aphelion, 1995, Swimming at Midnight, 95, Pages, 2000, Working Progress, Working Title, 2002, Newsletter Post, 2004, and Kedging, 2007. Triads was published in 2010, and a collection of memoirs, essays, and poems entitled Who Was Cousin Alice and Other Questions has just appeared in Brooke Shearsman. He has also translated work of several Swedish poets, including Jesper Svenbro and the Serbian epic poem Battle of Kosovo. In 2004, an issue of Samizdat Poetry Magazine was devoted to commentary on his work, and Salt is shortly to publish a collection of new essays on his work, featuring such distinguished critics as Gerald Bruns, Linda Kinnahan, Keith Tumor, and Keith Merrill. To conclude this breathtaking tally of publications, Shearsman has been stealthily buying up international paper production to launch John's collected poems. That is, as he says, collected longer and collected shorter poems in several volumes. This enterprise will means John's achievement must be reckoned with in any account of American poetry since the Second World War. Now, those of you who have heard me introduce poets before will now prepare yourself for the extensive critical excursus which reports to be illuminating with what follows, and indeed I've written such a thing that John has previously been mugged by my critical prose and absolutely refused to allow me to do this and insisted instead that I read from the back of his new collection of trigons which, from which he will be reading uh, imminently. So I will read you the relevant paragraph of the back of trigons. <laughs> A trigon derives its title from an obscure Roman ball game mentioned by Petronius in Satyricon. But of course, you all knew that. <laughs> the word also has meanings in the fields of music, astrology, gemology, architecture, poetics, and comic book illustration, all relevant to this book that is subtitled Seven Poems and Two Sets of Decoder. Trigon <laughs> shares something of the same spirit as Matthias's two most extravagantly invented experimental sequences autobiographical place and pages from a book of years. In an essay on the bias of cycles and sequences from the 1970s through the present, Mark Scroggins has said that Trigons explores the poet's usual historical and literary obsessions, this time revolving much around the Second World War, through a series of surprising juxtapositions, like that between the Nazi Rudolf Hess 
and his contemporary, the English pianist Myra Hess, or the discovery made during the book's composition of yet another John Matthias, this one a British composer and neurophysicist who becomes a shadowy doppelganger in this book in which both music and neurology play a highly significant role. And I can add that John Matthias and John Matthias have subsequently started to collaborate, which is extremely good news. So with that, I would like you all please to welcome John Matthias. I'm going to use this microphone just to practice with it um, a little bit. Um, it's crucial that we use uh, microphones for the, for the performance that uh, follows. Ah, wonderful, thank you for the performance that uh, follows, and uh, they're very subtly modulated, so that will, uh, that will be helpful. Uh, I thought uh, initially that I'd read a, uh, a few absolutely freestanding and uh, quite straightforward poems um, in order to demonstrate that uh, those exist in, in my work, but I, I decided that uh, as we were being ambitious and uh, what we're going to try to do if it doesn't crash entirely is, uh, is nothing if not ambitious, uh, I, I thought I would read um, the opposite kind of thing, that is portions of the long poem called uh, Trigons that um, dovetails with the text of the performance piece that we're going to do and in some ways uh, grows out of it and in some ways uh, leads back into it. And you, you mustn't um, care too much if uh, it feels that there are a lot of uh, non sequiturs and uh, very sudden uh, shifts uh, along the way. Uh, that happens on a line-to-line -line basis, and it happens even more so in the sequence that I'm going to read, uh, which is out of sequence. But one reason that doesn't matter has to do with uh, the gloss on the title Trigons that I'll read first and, uh, uh, and then begin. In fact, I'll read two or three of the, the definitions. Uh, in Latin, both a ball to play with and a game played by ancient Romans involving three players standing in a triangle, players caught with the right hand and through with the left, C.F. Petronius, Satyricon, where the scorekeeper does not count the number of times the players successfully pass the ball, but instead the number of balls that drop on the ground. A joke or the actual method of scoring? Three, DC Comics, all-powerful ruler of an alternate dimension who wishes to extend his influence to the earth. CF Mephisto. Four, music, a three-sided ancient Greek or Roman lyre a neum of obscure interpretation used in the notation of manuscripts from the Abbey of St. Gall, a German-based fusion band characterized by many changes in its lineup and by jamming as a source for their music. Six poetics, a set of three poems each in seven sections of varying length, may involve many changes in their lineup and jamming as a source of music. Seven, plural, logic puzzles published by Dell Magazines and others. Title of a book by John Matthias. I'm going to start in the middle of the first section of these uh, seven poems. Uh, first part of the book is called Trigons for an Old War, the Old War being the Second World War, uh, three drafts, and the first of the three drafts is called Islands, comma, uh, Inlands. And John mentioned his um, commentary on, uh, on my work, and it's for that reason that I'm going to read this uh, particular uh, section. Uh, the title of his uh, essay in the uh, forthcoming book edited by Archambault is called 
leering through zero. And uh, you'll pick it up toward the end of the section. But it begins off uh, Corfu, uh, more or less in the presence of uh, George Seferis, uh, the great uh, Greek poet who was on his way to uh, Alexandria and who became uh, great friends with uh, Lawrence Darrell and Henry Miller. And then it flips to a, a meeting in the 60s that uh, I had with, uh, with Henry Miller in, uh, uh, in Carmel. Uh, and then it takes a big jump, which is too complicated to explain. Uh, Mr. S. Thalassinos is a character in a series of poems by Seferis. To all eight points, his blood is scattered to the wind when Mr. S. Thalassinos describes a man who will till the story of his life. A bell tolls a traitor equally with patriot may tell. Seferis's logos deca pentasyllavos all given up for Doric clarity and arrows in demotic and the crotch like half the Brits. He washes up eventually in Alexandria to fiction, faction, fornication, where the god abandoned Antony, the Yank abandoning the marriage feast of Harmony and Cadmus for Big Sur. For such is fate, senor. And yet the alphabet was left us when, alas, Ambrosia turned to vin ordinaire and Icor just to pour plain red and human blood spilled and spilling in the deserts, mountains, seas. A year before, we'd uh, visited the Isolato in a black spring and heavy fog rolling down the hills. Above Carmel, he said, he missed those islands, missed those friends, but he was old and even sometimes weary with a bad back and stiff knee. Britain, too, an island. As islanders, we danced as Inlanders, we danced a foreign dance in 6-8 time and tried to sing the Lycophony when we could, the Rambatica drawing on, but stood entirely still and listened to the Romancero Gitan Lorca Greeked by Heraclean for descending minor thirds to tonic clattering beyond phalangist Spain, flamenco pistol on the hip, but not complicit with the ringing tone and Lino weeping, so they've taken him to Leros, oh my God, her gentle father who would read to her Elitis and Seferis when she cried. Inland from the skull, another island where we live and watch we cannot reach but still it wills love it wills death networked by rivers of our blood the self's fish swimming in the circles of illumination made by neural lamps for trident fishers epileptic wish to fly and just a snip of corpus colossum Two hemispheres there, two singers, two wedding feasts, two hallucinated histories and dances, all their own. How Hellenic Paraclete to come a comforter from Paracaline with parables that come a cropper when the skies fill with parachutes again at night and minds all complicit with the migraine ringing uncanny, the occult of Lesbos or of Leros, whose parabiosis then is on our side, then is on our isle. What saint or hero in the mind, Speridian, caragiosis, which pornographer will 
leer through zero in the fear of love and work when kingdom comes between us probes like God's goad electric stimulates Thalassa and Thalassa oceanic and unhealed washed over under some tsunami of the mind a thought thinking self same island inland from the skull of Crete Corfu Leros Lesbos on by Kaik where you will and settled up the coast while here they crossed the bridge on Highway 1 over Bixby Canyon where we'll be in half an hour poor Jack sleeping on the cliff face calling his hallucinations flying horses of mine mo no one would pick up the seedy sorry man who tried to hitch a ride even though they might have all been reading his last book he couldn't stomach later 60s all the hip young things he'd called into existence he was patriotic damn it and would kick their ass i don't know but i was only regent then and now a roving laptop only true begetter apple did not need a flying horse or sail to catch the wind but just a small garage in palo alto once we'd left i wrote about the heady origins of spread spectrum template 1941 in ballet mechanique john pierce himself of bull labs and telstar ending up at 80 in the 90s stanford university well after ccrma's acoustical good karma avant-garde fussed sufficiently with sine wave frequencies to fix parameters and modulate their way to Yamaha before the Google twins Brian and Page emerged from the same matrix moving into Mountain View no longer scorched irradiated earth for poets digs or orphan any slum but mine mo of ever sleepless eye scanning the entire world once we're underneath somebody's wifi umbrella we can type in jm music we can bring mathias in from plymouth firing neurons in his cortical songs which may be how we'll do it in the future when the green rabbit that we ride is something bioengineered by eduardo koch a transgenic poetry or xenographic transplant scriptogenesis with real ears instead of merely handlebars over which i flew one night some nitwit on a dark and stormy night sonnet author note revised John Mathias is professor emeritus at the University of Notre Dame and poetry editor of Notre Dame Review. He has published many books of poetry, criticism and scholarship including New Selected Poems 2004 and Catching 2007. He is also a musician and a physicist. Lecturer in Sonic Arts at the University of Plymouth. He has worked with many artists including Radiohead and Coldcut. His works and collaborations include Cortical Songs and The Fragmented Orchestra. He is in fact two persons and a fiction in this book. Sonnet Trigon Note revised. No Romans but involving at least two players with a right hand and a left. The right hand may not know what the left hand is doing but it doesn't matter anymore 
an actual method of scoring. Players must abide triplicity and third harmonic 120 degrees and group signs according to their element. No Romans, but remains of California, 1963 to 5, CCCP, 1967, Paris, 1968, and London off and on involving two players anyway, but no Romans. Many changes in the lineup by the fusion band, footnote one, but Greek and Roman lutes are herewith disallowed. Footnote one. It footnotes the phrase fusion band. Strong band sum is a natural construction from links to diachronic links. We compute hosty and Kidwell's diachromatic link invariant of a strong band sum in terms of monochromatic invariance of the data. Original link, comma, band, parentheses. It turns out that the two variable Conway polynomials of a strong fusion only depends on the monochromatic Conway polynomial of the original link. In particular, it does not depend on the band. Cochrane's series of coordinates invariants is discussed in the framework, partially supported by NATO. Google search, I'm feeling lucky. Don't you think they'd pitch him through the 80211 timbre of a movie babe in white nightgown, all sustained appoggiatura, in a spotlight falling from the clef, frequency quite different from a window in the forest with a single candle, in her window or a man with a railway lantern riding like a surfer on a wave, piggybacking sans encryption by default on OS 10 picks up whatever network's strongest on the little bridge, the sole punticello, A equals 440HZ and D's a little sharp, but are you there and are you there to catch a wave or hitch a ride on text or song and God only knows and God only knows what we did with all the multiplying integers of one another. All the overtones of things in underbrush at 6% for each step we took along the way and your treading doubled inland 12th root of two God only knows the earworm playback of the Rodex brings in with its warnings from a time I'd lost to old models. Hispaniola laid a couple points nearer to the wind and anchorage in sight. The early morning grays, all yellows now and greens of sand and trees. Hitcher was the abalone diver, and we never should have taken up his invitation, driven down the dirt road wagon path to where he had lost his boat. I clung to the back stay. Once we were a quarter mile out, and she was rolling scuppers, rudder banging to and fro. Get hold of it. Get hold of yourself, as she said. The more afraid you are, the less our chance of making it. Watts Towers rising in LA through all the smoke of urban riot like a dream of 
Gaudi steeples in a poet's Barcelona, Robert Duncan writing of them art dedicated to itself. Delete. West End London after 20 years, and all the Londoners are young and I am old. The women in particular, the girls, the birds, all in this hot weather wearing little, stripped for speed as they pass me by, hurrying to get beyond a Britain that just barely still exists, Chinese, Indians, Africans, and Arabs lovely in their different shades of skin and light clothes, veils of salome, or headscarves fall into the shoulders, pink and yellow saris, or the tight and low-cut jeans cinched with wide leather belt just above the pubic bone, a glitter of the jewelry and navel, lip or nose, and elsewhere, doubtless out of sight, they stride through the present with their men who now and then point to something in the air. Uh, Nelson's there, okay, and he is just the same, the only old boy I recognize just now around this square where oddly I have digs in Suffolk Street behind the gallery in whose basement shelter dug out low down and lower day after day, Myra Hess played on. I wrote about it in this book. Lord K is partially amnesiac, but knows his way to member's dining room while we must find a wheelchair for L. He's off and we get lost in narrow hallways, ask yet other ancients where to go and double back on double backings in a warren where the clerks scurry and the secretaries scatter, where's the member's dining room? I don't know, I'm not a member, mate, and no one really recognizes Lord K. It's been so long since he attended, been so long since Harold Wilson's cabinet met. These men with automatic weapons are security. You needn't be afraid because our papers have been tied around our necks with little silken ribbons. When a long time ago the bombers still were IRA and not the present lot, I sat through a debate about abortion. Everybody shook his own member in the gents, but you don't want to do it in the dining room, they'll take away your privileges, but haven't seen you for a long time. Everybody thought I say the smoked salmon's awfully good and for the main course I'll have the peasant. Rice pudding, Stilton cheese, espresso. After thanks or maybe poured about the other John Matthias, I've been curious since he entered Rodex Reflex on the drive along Route 1 in California to Big Sur. He didn't know that he was there or that he had a JM doppelganger chasing him around the internet and following his work. I can't make the Rosen Crown in Sanford on the 7th, but I know he's got a dialogue working in his music between gigs he does with Wax Room, Cold Cut, Radiohead, etc., where no one's brain is wired to produce an unpredictable but patterned firing of the neurons, only the guitars. But that's for relaxation and some stash when I hum a little theme deriving from the spiking neuron synchronizing patterns fed as MIDI data manifest as Light, all plasticity, synoptic voltage beyond threshold, some potentiated, some depleted in the x-axis, y-axis, unpredictable but never random. Then he knows that I've arrived to trigger an array of oscillators that can signal to all members and in real time 
on May 10th, we're face to face. And there appears here uh, four bars of um, Schubert, which are the first uh, four bars to the uh, setting of uh, Heine's uh, poem, the, uh, the Doppelganger. Conclude with the two sonnets at the end. One is called Send, and one is called Delete. Sonnet, Send. Dear Bob and Michael, Although I'm pretty sure this book contains a good many typos and other kinds of carelessnesses, I'm sending it along to you as an attachment. Please print it out and put it in a safe place. Sometime or other, it may be in a satisfactory state to publish. Meanwhile, it makes me feel easier to know that at least two friends have a rough copy in their possession. I'd meant to include my usual page or so of notes on sources and, as it were, the dramatis personae. Haven't done that yet. I'll be away for a while, but back in touch eventually. Here come the trigons. Sonnet. Delete. Dear Bob and Michael, Although I am pretty sure he had something going in the book he talked with you about, and from which you saw a few lines and passages, I've decided to delete it from his memory. Please destroy any pages and or references you may have saved. It makes me feel easier to know there won't be any fragments stuck in somebody's computer. He had meant to spend at least another year working on the contradictions, punctuation, syntax, overall coherence, and all that. Then he left it as it was. He'll be away for a while. Here go the trigons. of that book and other books by John Mathias are available back there for a mere five dollars today only. Hey. <laughs> jo McSweeney is the bad girl of American poetry. <laughs> She's a textual delinquent, a Tasmanian devil, a typhoon, and associate professor of English at the University of Notre Dame. She's a graduate of Harvard, Oxford, and the University of Iowa Writers' Workshop but seems to have emerged unscathed, but though I guess she left them slightly damaged in the process. Joyle's books include The Red Bird, Fence Books 2001, which Alan Grossman selected to inaugurate the Fence Modern Poet series. The Commandrine and other poems, is that the right pronunciation? Commandrine, Commandrine, Commandrine and other poems, Fence 2004, and the lyric novels Flet, Fence 2007, and Nyland the Sarcophaga, Tarpaul in Sky Press 2007. She writes regular reviews and articles for such venues as Boston Review, Rain Taxi, and American Book Review. Percussion Grenade, Poems and Plays, is forthcoming from Fence in spring 2012. And Salamandrine Eight Gothics, a book of necro pastoral and gothic prose, has followed, is from Tarpaul in Sky Press. She's currently at work on a book about media, genre, and poetics. Joyle's work as a publisher, editor, and blogger is among the best out there. She's the co-founder and co-editor of Action Books and Action Yes, a press and web quarterly for international writing and hybrid forms. The statement hardly does credit to a publishing enterprise that specializes in texts transgressing every boundary, such as the Japanese poet Hiromo Ito's Killing Kanoko and the Korean poet Kim, Kim Hyasun's Mummy Must Be a Fountain of Feathers nor indeed to the Action Yes web journal. Action Yes creates a space for worldwide textual delinquency and scorns appropriative capture. It has to be read. She is the co-founder of Montevideo.com, a collective blog for poetry, poetics, arts, and culture, where she has begun to articulate a poetics of degradation, quote, writing out of mutation, corruption, and conversion to vilified or unrecognizable forms of life, life and in and as a zone, a deformation zone. Uh, after the casual citation of Georges Bataille in early language poetry, just another French theorist, 
It's thrilling to hear the scabrous tone of Bataille's Collège de Sociologie churn through a negative Lucretianism of energetic release in slime and rotten excrement and through a programmatically unhealthy feminism turgid with disgust. Right. Joyelle's own writing has turned increasingly towards the perversion and chewing up and spitting out of despised genre in a no-holds-barred performance. She writes, you have to pour art's acid on your face and let it eat your face and make you a new face. And you have to be looking into a mirror the whole time. And the mirror has to be made of some molten registering substance that records the whole event in a kind of distended, smeary, disingenuous film, a damaged film. If your eyes melt, you know you are doing something right. That's the art coming out of your skull. How refreshing. <laughs> With her co-conspirator, Johannes Gorenson, Joelle has launched an international artistic cyclone from South Bend, Indiana. Her poetry, fictions, blogging, teaching and publishing and performances look more and more like one indivisible energy system. All means available are used to bring dead souls back to life and Joelle uses both the media and the dead souls brilliantly. So, let's get wasted, as George Bataille didn't say. Here's Joelle McSweeney. Dismissed. Um, or, yeah, let's get trashed, right? Because, so I have a new chat book. You can check it out. You will be the first humans, the like, first living humans to lay eyes upon it. And it's made of recycled materials, but it's also engraved. And it's, it's got a lot of luxury and degradation in its uh, materials. So I hope you'll check it out after the reading. Okay, so um, uh, thank you. And it's an honor and pleasure to be performing with my colleagues after the reading, and also to see my colleagues, John Wilkinson and Maude Elman and Professor Reddy. Uh, you are also lucky to be studying and working with them, um, and it's really great to see them again here tonight. So, um, one of the things that I've been interested in, well, over the summer I got this question in my head, where is art going and where has it been? Um, I plagiarized that. Um, as you might imagine, but, but that's the question that I had in my head, where is art going and where is it been? And at the same time, I found myself thinking about violence, um, how it comes to us, uh, how it comes to and from the body, how it makes a medium of the body and that you like, kind of replicate the violence even in your own thoughts, in your words, maybe in your deeds, um, how our experience of violence through the media uh, makes that violence so virtual and so real, it becomes hard to know what's virtual, what's real anymore about that violence. It feels so real when you're watching it from all over the world or even in a video game. So this first uh, poem is named for a video game, I don't know if you still call them that, for those games that they play on the computer, called Killzone 2. Anyone played this game? Uh, apparently this is an ult, yep, the cameraman. Apparently this is an ultra-violent game, a uh, single shooter game, but it was very well reviewed and it got a review in the New York Times, which called it the best game of the young year. And something about that discussion of um, the year as if it had a body, and then on the other hand this game as if it had like real violent bodies in it, kind of smushed together and made this poem. And the only other thing you need to know about it is that um, it features <laughs> an incident that they ha happened in Philly where I grew up during the millennium, they made a big pinata to drop candy on the crowd, but then they realized there was so much candy and it would crush the crowd, so then the cops had to shoot the pinata. It's like a typical Philly story if you lived outside Philly. Okay, here it goes. Kill Zone 2. Up on the wire, the young body makes a bend like a wave with its body of knowledge, then makes a bend like a lens. Thought and light, those carcinogens, make eyes through hard plastic at the fetal body. For I am the thought and the light, and I am the wire and the lens, looped with estrogens. Like the evening news, it's over. And it's over and over again. Before the candy can crush the crowd, the cop shoots the pinata with his service revolver, just shoots the pants off it, shoots it right in the paint. So it's over. It's all over the crowd. The crowd makes a spasmody, scrums for candy, in a series of balletic gestures seized from the 16th C, from the 16th arrondissement of my love for you, from the 16th chamber of my heart, multiplied, in that chamber, I take a bullet for every member of my team, a learned violence from the game of the year, an exercise in teaming and gaming, followed by relentless sleep in my femur trailer. If you think there's a moral here, a femoral artery, a pastoral, good news, you missed it. You're missing it. You're missing the morale boat. The boost, the boast, the shot, the overall thrust at the throat of the heart. It's a service game. It's the year for it. Here where the young body eyes itself on the jumbotron of the ox. Oh, that's 
So for my next act, I don't know if anybody was in uh, Professor Wilkinson's class today where we talked about Shelley. Anybody? Yeah, all right. Um, so I wrote this poem called Mont Blanc. I have this uh, <laughs> tendency of sort of rifling through anthologies and, well, maybe you, I, love, I learned about poetry from anthologies and I love them and the things that I love stick with me and then I use them. So this poem's called Mont Blanc. And, um, you know, because Mont Blanc is all about how, you know, what come, the power is on high and how, you know, the spirit moves through us. And, but I was thinking, like, well, what else moves for us? For example, um, McDonald's moves through us. <laughs> McDonald's advertising moves through us. Uh, mad cow disease moves through us. Um, e. coli moves through us. And all the things that we used to think were really good for us or bad for us, such as new car smell, which it turns out is like poison. And we recently got a new car, used Prius, which is like our prized possession in my family. We're so excited about it. And so the Prius here stands in for pretty much all that stuff. Mont Blanc. My Prius drives to the reservoir for some system downtime without me to blow off steam. Their runoff co collects from picturesque slopes and shops. Oh, jeunesse, dream Prius, brainless, brained. My daughters and kerneled neurons love your new car smell. And that's culture, self-recognition, a killer app. The gloomy lake of macerated hamster brain and spinal matter is thinking the same thought. The smaller the species, the faster its rate of exchange. In a test field of brain thistle born and braised in the briar patch of chemical currencies, the hot gossip and the dropped gate, the microscopic mouth lesions, the elevated drinkable levels, each species raises its dull rent flag and semaphore to be sacrificed. Cue Le Marseilles, cue call embroidery by deranged nuns. The zombie bride splits out of the attic like a mad moon, spits slick as promotional brochures, as promotional literature, contagious gland. The daylight, daylight makes a passing glance through its gas mask, then drops its modesty panel. At the boathouse, amyloid plaques may be rented for a sou and a nom de plume. In its flute, champagne announces its vacuoles, vacancy, just slink into this barroom bathroom. Just step into this trash can, wear a crown of crumpled, a crown of blows, a boot de souffle. The whole scene secretes detergents into the bloodstream, the lung, the avenue of trees. The fence suggests a jig and reel, a gavotte, a garotte, a cakewalk, an uprising of scythes, a reeling American fixed in enzymes, digests her own hairline and her protein coat, reappears in the next scene with a belt. This poem is like, if you could imagine, a horror B-movie slash Civil War movie starring Paris Hilton and Kurt Schilling. Uh, Kurt Schilling being the pitcher that won the 2004 World Series for the Red Sox with his um, Achilles tendon uh, sewn to his ankle bone, you might remember that. And then while he was playing, you could see the blood coming through his sock. So that's how he got in this poem, which is called Carpal Sepal. I want to get Augustine, pass the mustard, make it matter, make it brain matter, where the shattered cranium just shivs it in the darkened theater of the skull, as in the darkened theater where a sailor just shivs it a little up the seat of some skirt or suit, like, I got a man of war in the harbor, but I got a little skiffy on the side. His line is plum, he brings me nylons to slip over my enseamed thighs, where he thinks it makes my zippered spine shimmy, flip out, just churn chums, cream and turn over like a line of soldiers on the brow of the estate, encrusted with brain matter, peering through the blood-soaked eyelet, the raped bedroom window to where the paint chip lead soldiers now muster for the scene, now transmit, now black out, in their permanent press dress lead uniforms, antennaed bayonets raised for the splatter pick, roll call, roll camera, let the last girl, this is Paris Hilton, pick her way across the battlefield of upraised tibia, shattered and peaked at difficult angles, stripped ligatures flapping like battle standards in the night, pick on and spike heels cross the fo spongy fossy. But the upright second regiment of bone shards is a mighty blank phalanx now, unflappable, her ripped t-shirt flatters the bust that sunk teeth into a thousand cartons of porno DVDs, shrunk wrapped in container ship from Malaysia, and fondling nearly founders its contents. The regiment responds and yanks the 
the moon's Achilles tendon tight, nails it to earth's ankle bone so that the pitch may be delivered. Back on track, sure and black, as from the rotting charnel mound, the starlet's last gyrating thought seeps and inflares time's tissue, wastes its own field of vision, clots fetal toxin, blacks out, spot bleeds, refuses to carry the message, which winds up anyway, finds other channels, sinks molar into earth's sinusoidal bone and water table, into the spit curl of the universe, now seizes, now abrades, and now abides, and now relaunches, and in guts, and engulfs, and now subsides, and now winds up, and here's the pitch. Um, so this is an anaphoric poem, meaning it just repeats the same words again and again, and I hope that doesn't get boring for you. And so I was thinking about all this stuff about media, and well, I was thinking about internet porn and the Virgin Mary. I, mean, I was thinking about the Virgin of Guadalupe and how, you know, everyone knows her. She rocks. Um, she is the patron saint of Latin America and specifically Mexico. And um, you see her everywhere. She's a bumper sticker. She is a tattoo. She's a t-shirt. She's a candle. Um, all these different medias, but it's always the same figure, right? But in the same way, the Virgin Mary, Catholic thinking, shows up in all these different places, has a different name. Every time she shows up, um, has a slightly different message, but it's all one thing. And in some ways, that's like porn. You know, I mean, really, there's more varieties than you want to think about, but if you really tried, I bet you could think of all of them. That will not be your homework assignment. But instead, I will read you this poem, Guadalupe. Just inside the Cutter's Pavilion, just at the peak of the oxygen tent, just on the inner lid of the hairline coma, just on the inner thighs of the medical canal, just up under the gesso of lubrication, just up to the hairline of the hairline crack, just there where the adolescent girl eyes the camera, just under the burden of her fish scale hair, just where one sister shoulders the other, just why should one sister have to shoulder the other, just while out of the frame the globe unshouldered rolls around like a boulder in the mouth, just the whole world like a wadded up burden in the mouth, just the asphyxiating banquet, just rolls around helping as a star, just on the no place of the universe, just before the speeches can be made, just like a girl, just on the floor, just on the roof, just of the mouth, just of the world, just of the rat, just or the lion, just in the myth, just a talking fist or a molten shower, just has been made to swallow the camera, just to bulge at the throat like a boy, just paid to act surprised like a mother, just the passed out, just the anaerobic, just the utterly depleted, inexorable, paid extra, just collects her check at the cleft in the bone, just cashes her check at the all night escarpment, just deposits it at the finger bone grate, just where the finger bones scrape, just right up to the knuckle, just who is smirking at this lady army, or who let in that squad of infant technicians? Just like a mummy from its museum case, just smirks at the mortal crowd, or just like the snow sh sweeps a chamber of air clean, just above the gas chamber, just above the taps, just whips cold air like a child, just under the taps, just there where there was color but the film couldn't show it, just could not illuminate or bring it, just to write it down or write it, just where the elevator shaft just runs on blood like a metaphor, just runs on top speed to the topmost floor, just traumatizes the bottom of the bottommost shaft, just keeps showing the same picture, just keeps coursing through the building like a sickness, just keeps on building like a current, just has a horse in it, just runs on many hours like a horse, just till its horse are blown and its kneels are shattered, just junkies, just shocks out, just giving blood, just till nothing more can be done to it, just till everything after this will hurt it, just not that he will even know it, just not that it will even know a thing, just magnificent like the hairs of an onion, just grow through the nasal vaults of the sky, just burst like a bird from the char wall of a dandy, just the chest wall riddled like a bursar's book, just the cell wall thin as a list of debts, just hump an ear where it's canceling function, just rips like a rib through its shroudering side, just lapses chum through its febrile tissues, just now opens its exhaust pipe, just now lowers a blade or a rotor, just bears down on placenta until death, just blows death and life from the same function, just the wine of its carbon copies. And I wrote that in the middle of the swine flu epidemic, which is now such a dear memory for all of us. And so this idea of like something carbon copying in all of our tissues was very, I was very alert to it then. So the last thing I'm gonna read is a series of poems. Uh, it'll go pretty quick, I think. And it's called King Prion. And you might see a little <laughs> path running through these poems. So the prion is uh, the, the protein that gives you mad cow disease. Uh, it gives us mad cow disease. It can also, if you get it from sheep, give you 
uh, Kreutzfeld jacobs syndrome. When the sheep get it, it's called scrapey. Uh, it's a really incredible thing because it's not a virus or a bacteria. It's just like this little protein, like it's folded weird. It comes in your body through your hamburger and then it makes your proteins all fold weird and then you get holes in your brain and you die a long and sort of spectral death um, of, dis of increasing discomfort um, and dementia and all that. So that's mad cow disease. And, um, and it comes to you through the prion. So, and no one knows, how, once you get it, that's it. You have it, there's no cure. Um, and it's, you know, around. In fact, it's in your brain right now, but until you get one of the, like, messed up prions, your prions, like, stay put, and then the, like, funky one comes and makes your prions all flip out and copy it. So in this way, it's a medium, right? It's like a, something that makes you want to be like it, um, despite how bad it is for you. So I wrote this poem called King Prion, and it really is a way of thinking, writing about the prion is a way of thinking about it. All these questions that um, John brought up in his introduction, how art comes to you like a violence and changes you and forces you to make more art, um, or at least that's how it is for me. Okay, well, I'll drink some water here. So this poem is a kind of possession by all these things, by violence, by illness, by media, by art. And so this poem works like a kind of a possession that starts with a really strange noise. Um, which is supposed to be the spirit coming to me so I can read the poem. King Prion. Who lay in an array of pixels, fat simulated proteins, looks just like nutrition, acts just like an avatar. I just want to give my body to end up a guarine, ginkgo, balboa, azotine, melanine, campobacter, phylacter, nicotine, which hung like neuron nectar in the cell net of vata cough dropped hairball tells the future of neural center where the straight lines hop like a hairline fracture on a bender, jumps out Mulholland retaining wall and crashes the crinkled veil of food for thought, fruit for monkeys in a barrel, one fruit per monkey for a total of 47 monkey days and a total of 12 hours at a clip, the go home and feed the baby milk of it, that man is a mouse chased by goats round a rain slicked hair playing off a cliff in and now I pause to remember how art was a silver paper molded to the ceiling where you cut your hair for your rebirth as Feta Androgiana the scissors sister who slits where she goes into cuts as she cuts this machine makes its need louder and invites me into its duct. Unlike the baby sleeping on the other edge of power eyes rolled mouth pinched shut round powers earthly sinks and shunts King Prion, who crept up a knife blade ladder on spectator shoes or gladiator sandals, cut to the glut, Feta Androgiana, to the fat of the matter. You cupped yourself to the sickle cell table. There's a drug for that, and its name is traced on ice with a triple toe Lutz boot black blade handle, Dorothy Hamill, hack locks for the trunk sale, sword tied to the second hand, the glabrous torso pouring bile and tied to the saddle makes the failing world go round in battle on horse legs, bone chip top tip nobble. I live in a star house built for denial, Hygienus in Scarsdale, a case of adolescent sarcoma. It has six dental points, despite the five on my papers, despite the Nazi hinges singeing yours. Those black arms swing like a crazy cat clock point everywhere. I'm an artist, so like a broken clock, I never have had to repeat myself. King Prion. <laughs> used to haunt the lobby while you stood there in your capizios, white ankled as anything tied to a spit, playing the boy Isaac to anybody's daddy Abby. Was that Latin and who's that, beggar French? His hat blade cut the murk above his antibody. His switch hand switched like a cat. I call that man lucky who, sitting next to you in the after gig goddess, Goddess dragged the lad over the river, him, her, then dragged the river after that. We dragged the river for his alley marrow. His tender cock leapt up like a robin in spring, where the cord snuck up to the shutter like medical tubing. You thought you could death on your own terms, do the reverse frog, the Maria Montez. Mmm, like a negative bullet blank or a credit card balance. Nice try, hot shot, king, prion, king, prion, king. King Prion. 
wore a highbrow eyebrow pencil skirt and a smile and bent over the medical suite table in San Diego, wholly martyred from the bottom to the top, listened to the transistor head like a holy roller leapt analog into the brain's manifolded panty waist ladder randall. Was it for this, Fena Andragiana, you held your blade to the wet stone, rolled in time's big haystack and needles? I'll trade you the spindly future, self failure in the oracular canal and oracular chamber for a quantity of hamburger right now, hot and mashed like a tissue in the pocket, a remastered card in the second gut. How I love a little pick and roll on the side, on the distaff side. Death's issue casts his bolt from the blue to the brain like a bolt in the brain. King Prion. <laughs> Wore that morning's livery, slippery, made a loop of a loop, a jeweler, happy, happiest toddler on the block. And when he looked closer, the red cell debucketed, spilt its guts like a hasp spent or a hen bent over eggs in the nest of complexity. Easy's over. A chopping or an auction block, a chopping list. What complexity could crack and flow like this and make a motion studyable in MIT or reproduction in 3D? If you need me, I'll just be standing outside for a sec in media, ab ovum. Like a kid just studying hump and dump. I didn't know you had to study that stuff. Oval is the shape of the egg, pierced, blown, and strung up before the horse. The cart before the horse before the chicken bucket. Better me. That's no way to go to the dump, to dump the contents, pump the trumped up sludge like chum, pump action, lamp chain or chain gang, dead key on an other fucking keyboard or lanyard chomp bit in the mouth of the dust, in the mouth of the champ of the chumps. Had a brain for sin and a body for numbers while I sink, sank, sunk number after number into the slain crowd like lawn darts or a numb raft on the party circuit in a gown slit or high like a ribbon of moonlight. The moon that breaks the cloud bank splits the brow with a number one bullet point ball peen open faced which asunder cannot be shut but must each 24 hour be driven through. A shoot full of cows shoots the moon, puts the zwei in death's ein dry. Without insight, the cow's eye goes thick in its socket as a lover's sigh on the lagoon, as a moonless night on the lagoon. King Prion. Wolf whistled and cadillac into the canyon wall. Red river at blood set, mad as a strip tendon. Senator mouse catch and four faces from the mountaintop. Old diabolical engine, old granite, old labial, and old archdiocesal iron signs. They frowned down upon today's fever index. Rocky, sparted, cat scratch, car crash, car wash, and scotch guarded SUV off gassing into the afterlife. It's upright family cargo. I'm one half lab rat into the shingle. Gravel tamps down my pink eyes, grout clads, my claw hammer, my inner all, and my petite piston. As I strive for a burial berth in the afterlife's low slung motel, mid road trip, mid Lincoln Continental Divide. The drain first clock, then counterclockwise. The exhaust fan, its Nicorette filter wise. The rodent dropping whir of its hard drive. That's it. Thank you.